All right, well, I'm uh, glad that you all could uh, make it out here, that I could see you all uh, this morning. And if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn to Isaiah 66 with me? Isaiah 66. Uh, this morning, looking in uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, I thought to uh, go to a little bit of an occasional study, uh, given that, uh, or the circumstances that we're meeting together here uh, in the outdoors. Uh, and I wanted to talk about the temple of the Lord, uh, the house of the Lord, uh, and, and how uh, we, I know we all, standing out here, sitting around, we want to be in this building here. Uh, we wish that we could walk in and we could all sit down in our normal seats and we could worship together uh, in that way. But I want us to look in Isaiah 66 verses 1 and 2, uh, and I want us to see that the Lord uh, has just as much good for us out here as he does in there. And so if you have your Bibles in Isaiah 66, and we'll just read verses 1 and 2 together. The scripture says, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you, and Lord, we thank you for the day that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for uh, the beauty of nature that we can enjoy out here. And uh, Lord, we pray that in the days ahead, you would help us to see that and enjoy it with you. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd be uh, with this whole nation, this whole world, uh, in this troubling time. Uh, Lord, that you'd help them. Uh, Lord, be with those that couldn't be here with us. And Lord, help them to know that uh, they can enjoy your presence and your spirit uh, and the uh, love that you give even where they are. And uh, Lord, even fellowship with us through your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, that you'd forgive us and that you'd keep us safe until the day of Jesus Christ. And it's in his holy name we pray it all. Amen. So our passage here, uh, speaks about the temple of the Lord, uh, the world that God has made. It speaks first by way of God's exclusive self-dependence. God is dependent on nothing but himself. Uh, anything that you can point to, anything that we might think God needs in order to uh, to be good and be in uh, in his uh, his joy, his glory, uh, it is not so. In Acts 17, 24, we read, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. See, notice that it says he doesn't even need the worship of men. He does not need us uh, to, to have anything, uh, not even his, our worship, not our tithes and offerings, not our service to him. God does not need it. God is completely sufficient by himself. There is no lack of any good thing in God himself. In John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And in verse 4, in him was life. Every good thing, all of life, uh, all perfections are God's to enjoy. In 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. He doesn't even need us to enjoy fellowship. He has it in himself. He enjoys fellowship with himself among the three persons of the Godhead. He is completely self-dependent and dependent on nothing else but himself. But in contrast to this, we are in full dependence on things other than ourselves. 
We cannot sustain ourselves for one moment. We are fully reliant on God. Hebrews 1.3 says, Who being in the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person and upholding all things by the word of His power. Not the word of our own power, but the word of His power, it says. Uh, he upholds us. He gives us everything that we have. Even in our spiritual matters, in our spiritual development, we are in no way dependent on ourselves. Uh, we cannot supply uh, what it, it means to even be a full person without God. In Ephesians 2.1, You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, fulfilling the lust of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. We were dead, we were children of wrath, we walked in disobedience, and if it were not for the fact that it says, you hath he quickened, that is, God quickened, we would still be in that state. All of our spiritual development, all of our spiritual qualities come from God. And even in our own death, we are shown to be completely powerless and completely externally dependent. Ecclesiastes 8.8 8 says, There is no man that hath power over the Spirit to retain the Spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. And all of this is just wrapped up in the saying of our passage that we read. The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool, says the Lord. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. He has made everything. He has made us. We have not made ourselves, and we rely completely on Him. And so what does this mean for us today being out here? Uh, outside of the church house. What it means is that God did not make this world out of any need in himself. God did not make this world because he had to make the world. God made this world for our enjoyment. God made the world for us. God made the world for us to come out here today and sit in this parking lot and enjoy the, the, uh, the view of being outside and to worship Him. And this is exemplified in exactly what's being said in our passage. What he's, God is, is referring to, He's saying that uh, he, He's asking the people, what is the temple that you've built to me? What is the, the, the house that you've built for me? What is the place of my rest? He's asking, you know, have you built me a house that I needed? Have you, you set up a building to come and worship me in as though I needed that? But rather, he says, all of these things I have made, all of these things I've created, supplied for me, I have made it. I sustain it. I gave you the hands to do it. I gave you the feet to walk to the work. I have given you mouths to praise me from. What need do I have from you? What house have you built unto me? He says he has made himself a house. That is, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. In Psalm 84, 1, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her eggs, or her, her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. We can uh, uh, empathize with 
David's sentiment here. We want to be in that house. We want to worship God as we have every Sunday up till this point. We want to, to walk into his house. We would, we would come more often if we could. And yet, we can't. But our passage says that we can. That we can come to the house of the Lord together here this morning. That we are right now standing in his house. Isaiah 40 verse 21, Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. God made this world a temple for himself, a tabernacle for us to worship him in. God has made every hill for his pillar, every tree for the same. He's set the clouds as his curtains. He has given the wind to bring fragrances to his house and his worshipers in it. Even the rain that may come later today is ordained for the cleansing and nourishment of his household. God has made the world his temple. What, a better, what better place is there for us than to come out here and worship him in his temple? God uh, has has given it for this purpose. And so the first thing I want us to see together, believers, is that we should not be discouraged to come out here and worship God. We shouldn't be discouraged that the, the government has not enter into the building and, and worship together in that way. We, should, we can be content and we can be grateful to God that he's provided this great temple for us and even more beautiful than uh, our building in there. But we also have another provision that God's made for us mentioned in the passage. And I would not go uh, preaching through this without mentioning it. And that's in the second part of verse 2. He says, But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Now, who is this? And I'm sure that you all know that this is Jesus Christ. To this man will I look, says the Lord. To him that is poor, of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my words. Christ became poor for us. He came into the temple of God. He stepped into creation for us. And he went and was made poor for us. Matthew 8, 19, A certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He who owns all of this, the cattle on a thousand hills, who made the world, who made all of the gold in it, all of the riches of it, he came and was made poor. He didn't even have a place to lay his head at. He came and he humbled himself for us. He was made of a contrite spirit for us. Matthew 9, 12 says, When Jesus heard that he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not calm, come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He humbled himself. He was contrite. He was made the friend of publicans and sinners, and that for their salvation. As we uh, saw uh, last Sunday when we looked at Zacchaeus, and he came to Zacchaeus and uh, was a friend to him. And Christ, in all that he did, trembled at the word of his Father, obeying it. Luke 22.42 says that Christ prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. 
and he sweat, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Jesus trembled. Jesus was afraid. Jesus heard the voice of the Lord calling him to come and die for the sins of his people, and he did not shy away. He, trembling with great drops of blood falling, prayed, he went willingly to the high priest's house and then to Pontius Pilate and Herod and to be brought before the people of Israel and to be driven up Mount Calvary with a cross on his back, trembling and bleeding the whole way and dying on the cross for us. Surely he was made poor and of a contrite spirit and trembled at the word of God. And all of this he did so that God would have favor on us. He suffered in God's temple as a perfect sacrifice for sin. Luke 23, 33 says, When they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's why he came, to die for our forgiveness and so believers this morning as we're out here and we're uh beginning a a, a new uh cycle of of coming to church in a slightly different way as i said before let's not be discouraged at this god has made his own house god has provided us a place to come and worship before him and a good place it is to worship him in but not only that because Christ died in this household, we can come and find grace wherever we are. We can approach to God and have everything that we need. And so as we go from this place, as we uh, go to our homes, let's not forget to uh, do the will of God to uh, hold worship in our own households and to... Uh, Always remember that God has provided for us. 1 Timothy 2, 8, uh, verse 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And in Psalm 134, we read, Behold, blessed are the Lord, uh, ye, behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. This is what we ought to do. Come to his sanctuary and bless him. For the Lord hath made heaven and earth. Blessed out, uh, bless thee out of Zion. Because he's made this, we can go and we can worship. Let's lift up our holy hands as we go. Uh, though if you're driving, don't do that. Uh, but when you get home, certainly give thanks to God for the goodness that he has shown to you. And now again, if there is any unbeliever here, um, I never want to stop without addressing an unbeliever. You, of course, have sinned against the Lord in what you've done. And what's worse, you've done it in his tabernacle that he's provided for you. He has made the whole world and you have for his glory, for his worship, and you have defiled it by your sin. Romans 3.10 says, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. And Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. And this death awaits you for the high crime of sacrilege, of defiling God's consecrated temple. But Romans 6.23 also says that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Just as we read earlier, Christ died, and as he died, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, so that whoever looks to him in faith will have their sins forgiven them. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. In 2 Corinthians 5.12, we read, 
For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so come and believe on him and be made the righteousness of God in him. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Uh, Father God, again, we come before you and we thank you for uh, your grace towards us. Uh, Lord, for uh, preparing us a place to worship you in. And Lord, we pray that uh, for as long as it takes, Lord, that you would continue to uh, allow us to meet here together uh, to worship you. Uh, Lord, I pray a blessing on everyone here as they go. Uh, Lord, that you would be with them, uh, that you would help them in their household worship in the days ahead. Uh, Lord, give them the uh, wisdom to uh, come before you in prayer and in study. Uh, and Lord, give them a fellowship among themselves through your Lord Jesus. Lord, again, be with those that aren't with us uh, here today. Uh, Lord, we ask the same blessing on them. Be with all of your churches in uh, our nation, Lord, and in this world uh, to help them in this time to uh, be servants to their community, to, to um, share the gospel even in the midst of this uh, trying time. And Lord, again, we pray that you would uh, protect us until the day of Christ. And it's in his name we pray it all. Amen.